Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Bruce Ellis, and this is the Insider Report. So sit back, relax, and let your ears do the walking as I fill you in on what's going on in the area this weekend and beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Cat was feeling a little down in the weather today, and uh, so she's not going to be in here, so I'm flying solo again. It's been quite a while since I had to do that, but... <laughs> It happens once in a while. I hope she gets to feeling better. And I'm sure it was because after what we did this weekend, we were at that Jog Your Memory run there that Monarch Gardens put on this last weekend, Saturday. It was a nice little turnout there and a bunch of runners. And I found out what a color run was all about. I didn't have any clue as to what color run meant. And as soon as I got blasted with a bunch of colors, <laughs> chalk colors, I knew what a color run meant. Yeah, they all taught me real well what was happening there. Uh, so yeah, that's what they do. They, uh, I guess it's something that goes on. And when the runners come down to the finish line, they get bombarded with uh, colors as well, which is, it's like just chalk, colored chalk. You got the pinks. Uh, yeah, just different colors and yellow. And what was it? Pink, yellow, and blue, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was wearing it for a few hours, but and my grandson, he was there with me, and he had fun, and he was, he had fun throwing, well, of course, he got to throw colors around at everybody and not get yelled at. So <laughs> there you go. You get to be naughty, and it's all right. Yeah, very cool. But yeah, it was fun. Yeah, really good cause. It was for Alzheimer's awareness, and uh, yeah, we uh, talked about it for next year and everything like that, so it looks like a lot of people are interested in helping with it next year as well, and so it's going to be another one going on there So in the community ending it out there and uh, yeah, another event so that'll be fun and nice little run there it was about a mile they went around the uh, i didn't run i didn't run i just showed up to support but uh yeah i didn't do that but I did see them all everybody else running and all that good stuff and i was there taking pictures of them all getting blasted with the colors and <laughs> like i said i got blasted myself so that's the whole idea you just got to get blasted with the colors and then you're officially in the color run so, yeah, very cool. Good cause. Good attendance. It was nice to see everybody out there. Hadn't seen some people in a while, and it was like, great. And, and some of the vendors and people that hang out at our events were there. So, yeah, very cool, very cool. And like I said, we got a lot going on still, so I'm going to go ahead and get on with the show. I hope you all had a good weekend, and I got out and did something, because it looks like I'm noticing a switchover from... Outside events are now starting to go inside events. Now it's going to be really popular. So yeah, all these inside events. But nonetheless, there are events going on still. So we're having a good time doing that. And uh, yeah, before we get going, I'd like to thank Trike City Dispensary, the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show, or one of the other fine shows at KCIW, all you got to do is go to kciw.org and you will be on your merry way. Well, you can tell I'm a little tired too. Uh, and it was a long weekend. It started from Friday and went all the way through having some fun. Yeah. So there you go. That'll happen every time. So here we go. We got a music schedule going on for the area. It's all brand new because the Insider is coming out this week. The entertainment newspaper. We got Cisco and Daltrey happening on the 11th and the 25th at the Checkco Activity Center, 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And on the 19th, you'll find them at the Seaview Senior Living at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And the Tony Land Band is happening on the 28th at Kuntai from 6 to 8. Mike Powell, he's playing on the 6th at Checkco Brewing from 6 to 8. And on the 27th and 28th, you'll find them at Elk Valley Casino, 7.30 to 10.30. The Bloodline Band... It's happening on the 13th at Oxenfree, 9 p.m. Disturbing the Peace is doing a little something out of town. They're playing on the 28th at Moose Lodge, McKinleyville, California, 7 to 11. But if you're out in that way, catch Disturbing the Peace. Yeah, a little DTP for your night. Hey, the Mighty Steelheads on the 6th at the Intertech. They'll be playing at 8. On the 14th, they'll be at Portal Pints playing at 8. And on the 20th and 21st, they'll be at Elk Valley Casino, 7 p.m. The Italian guys, forget about it. On the 7th, they're playing on the Intertech at 7 p.m. On the 13th, they'll be at Coon Tai at 6 p.m. On the 27th, they'll be at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant at 6. And on the 28th, they'll be at Intertech again at 7 p.m. A ranch party is playing on the 6th, the Elks Lodge, 7 to 9 p.m. And then on the 27th, they'll be at Coon Tai, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. 
Danielle and Ohana on the 21st. They'll be at Abigail's from noon to 2 p.m. And Danielle, it was really cool at our last event. She got up there at the Doctoberfest and her group, Danielle and Ohana, and a lot of other people jumped in towards the end of her set too. But she got up there and sang for the first time in front of a big audience like that on the first time on stage like that. You know, she's done a lot of stuff at the... Uh, at Latitude 42 and all that. But now, you know, she got up on stage for the first time, so it was pretty exciting. It was really cool to have her up there, and she sounded fantastic, so that was good stuff right there. I don't think I mentioned that last week. So, yeah, very cool, very cool. Local girl, does good. Hey, P.A. and T. Roy on the 14th. You can find them at Coon Tai, 6 to 8. And then Elk Valley Casino's got some events going on in the Betty Green Center. They've got on the 6th, Harabe Mexicano at 7 p.m., on the 14th, it'll be Carl Lee, stand-up comedian, 8 p.m. On the 21st, at Seven Summers, a Morgan Wallen tribute at 8 p.m. And then on the 28th, it's Cosmic Bingo Time. Times are going to be determined is what they got here. A little TBD going on there. Hey, and the Warriors Bar and Grill, as you said, on the 6th and 7th, it's Robert Tiernan, 7 p.m. On the 13th and 14th, it'll be Jesse Mead at 7 on the, both nights, on the 20th and 21st, the Mighty Steelheads at 7. And on the 27th, 28th, Mike Powell will be playing 7.30 to 10.30. Got the off time there. <laughs> Very cool. Hey, Rogue Strings, on the 6th, they'll be at the Hall, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. On the 7th, they're doing an Oktoberfest at the Blue Box in Winchester Bay from 4 to 6. And on the 14th, they'll be at Flespies, 9 a.m. to midnight. And then the Inateca is going to be playing on the 6th. They'll have Mighty Steelheads at 8. On the 7th, the uh, Italian guys at 6. And then Mark Piccanel at 8. So a doubleheader that night. On the 21st, I love this, they'll have the Frog Bite Band at 8. And on the 28th, the Italian guys at 8 p.m. And then Misty Mountain Bruin has got going on. Let's see. On the 6th, Apple Barner. On the 13th, Lon Goddard. On the 20th, it'll be David Clark. And on the 28th, they're having their anniversary Halloween party, so there's not going to be any music going on, but there'll be some fun going on. So, yeah, that's it for the old music schedule. If you uh, didn't hear something on there, if you're a band out there playing and you didn't hear your name on here or where you were playing at, then you need to send your info to me so I can get it on the show, in the paper, whatever I can do, I will get it out there for you. You just got to send it to CaptainCurry541 at gmail.com. And yeah, there you go. We can get it on the show. Czech Pelican players are presenting Arsenic and Old Lace by Joseph Kesslering. This will be playing at the Czech Co. Playhouse, 1240 Czech Co. Avenue. Actually, I think this is the last weekend coming up. Yep, the 6th and the 8th. On Friday and Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. On Sundays it's 2 p.m. So they got 6th, 7th, and 8th. Yep, it'll be the last days. Tickets at Czech Co pp.booktix.com or you can call 541-469-1857. Adults are $15 and students are $7. You are cordially invited to the home of Abby and Martha Brewster for a lovely evening and a glass of, don't go near it, elderberry wine. That's right. Come watch as Mortimer Brewster proposes to the girl next door only to discover a dead body in his aunt's home. Sprinkle in a psychotic brother and drunken plastic surgeon and you are guaranteed a time you won't soon forget. Yeah, good stuff. And I've been seeing sold out audiences on that one. Yeah, sold out shows. So that's a good thing. That's a good play. That's right. I love the movie. So I know the play's got to be good. And then Del Norte Public Health is having a free flu clinic. They've got a schedule here for them. On the 5th, they'll be at Stalin Health from noon to 4. On the 6th, they'll be at Del Norte High School parking lot, 3.30 to 6.30. On the 11th, there will be at Del Norte Senior Center, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And for info on any more dates, you can call 707-464-0861. And the Northern Knights Car Club is presenting the 2023 Sea Cruise. This is happening on the 7th and the 8th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. both days. The Sea Cruise is a gathering of classic car buffs with a day of judging, food, marketplace, vendors, and more. You'll be met with an impressive display of vintage vehicles, hot rods, and other sweet rides. The annual event takes place at Beachfront Park in Crescent City. There will be food from a variety of food trucks featuring Asian cuisine, burgers, dogs, fries, beef sandwiches, and more. You can experience good food and great community. The JCs providing a beer garden as well, so proceeds from the event go toward 
local scholarships, and nonprofits. Check out their awesome cars and contribute to awesome causes. Hey, now it's time for some quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. That's right. Hey, here are a few quotes from the one and only John Lennon. He was born on October 9th, 1940. He says, life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. He goes, time you enjoy wasting was not wasted. And the thing the 60s did was to show us the possibilities and the responsibility that we all had. It wasn't the answer. It just gave us a glimpse of the possibility. And last but not least, when you're drowning, you don't say, I would be incredibly pleased if someone would have the foresight to notice me drowning and come and help me. You just scream. That's right. I hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from John Lennon with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you don't say it in that way. You just go ahead and get it out there. All right, so here we go. Danakai presents Harabe Mexicano Fiesta en Familia concert. This is going to be happening at Elk Valley Casino at the Betty Green Event Center. We mentioned it earlier. On the 6th at 7 p.m., Danaka presents the incredible border sounds of Harabe Mexicano. Celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with Harabe's eclectic mix of genres ranging from Mexican folk, Tex-Mex, to Latin rock. Trio Romantico and popular cumbia so sounds. Their traditional mariachi string instruments and Norteno-inspired drums complement dramatic vocals in English, Spanish, and even Spanglish. Tickets are available at Del Norte Office Supply in Crescent City and online at danaka.eventbrite.com, and any remaining tickets will be available at the door. For more information, you can contact Danaka at 707-464-1336 or office at danaka.net. Hey, a first Friday show and shine downtown car cruise will be happening here. On the 6th, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., it's at 783 3rd Street in Crescent City. Beer, wine, food, artisan vendors, music, and entertainment. That's what they say. And then Checo Valley Historical Society Museum, located at 15461 Museum Road in Harbor, has a 2023 Cider on Sunday going on. This will be happening October 8th, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. There's apple pressing. Come and see how the cider was made during Pioneer Towns. Bring up to 10 gallons of apples and one or two clean gallon jugs and $5 minimum donation, and they'll squish them up for you. Yeah, there you go. Press it for you, just like the old days. They got an apple pie baking contest featuring two divisions. They got the youth is up to up to 18 years, and adult is 19 years plus. Prizes for the top three pies in each division. Please have the pies to the Checo Valley Museum Annex by 2.15, they say, if you're going to be doing it. After judging, pie by the slice will be sold with ice cream. A yum, yum. That's what they said. Bake sale and a raffle tub. Hot apple fritters are made on the site, and live music will be there as well. Come join the fun and support the preservation of our local history. For more information, you can call 541-469-5650 or 541-469-3144. And they ask that you, no dogs, please. You leave Fluffy at home. Thank you very much. And Southwestern Oregon Community College, Curry Campus, Wild Rivers Coast Food Trail is going to be happening here on October 11th, noon to 1. Would you like to buy more locally harvested food to support producers and restaurants that work hard to grow and use local ingredients? If your answer is yes, you won't want to miss any this informative presentation. The Wild Rivers Coast Food Trail is a collaborative effort to connect locals and visitors to the bounty available on Oregon's south coast. Supporting local food is a way to support our communities. The program, sponsored by the Friends of Curry Campus, will be presented by Kathleen Dixon in the community room on Southwestern's Curry Campus, 96082 Lone Ranch Parkway off of Highway 101 in Brookings. For more information about the Curry Campus Contact them at 541-813-1667 or visit www.socc.edu slash curry. Hey, and Forecastle Books and Gallery at 553 Checo Avenue is presenting Poetry Reading featuring Earl E. Moore. This will be happening October 12th, 6.30 p.m. In his first volume of dramatic verse, She Oregon, Earl Moore presents A Vision of Awakening with His Relationship to Oregon. In this collection, Moore explores a variety of themes, including the exploitation of Oregon, its land, water, indigenous peoples, and the perceived myths that he doesn't accept. He bends to making up his own myths. 
For years, Moore was a guest reader in school classrooms in Curry County, Oregon, as the reading Wizard of Odd. During those years, Moore also conducted literary open mic sessions at Gold Beach Books. For more info, you can contact Michael Spring at 541-450-1115. And the Lions Clubs of Oregon Recycle for Sight Eyeglasses Collection Day is coming up on October 14th. And the places you can take them would be at McKay's Market from 10 a.m. to noon, then Fred Meyer's from noon to 2, and then Grocery Outlet from 2 to 4. And if you can't make it on the 14th, there are other year-round collection sites. Fred Meyer Eye Center, Checo Activity Center, Eye Center, Dr. Walker, Brookings Elks Lodge, let's see, Precision Eye Care, Checo Community Library, Seaview Senior Living, Pacific Coast Hearing Center, and Hearing Health Care Incorporated. Those you can take your glasses so you can help out recycle for sight eyeglass collections. All right. Hey, Turtle Rock RV Parking Resort, they're not done yet. They're presenting the Turtle Rock Fall Festival. This is happening on October 14th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You are invited to celebrate the fall with them at the first ever Turtle Rock Fall Festival. Bring the kids, pick out a pumpkin at the pumpkin patch, take a hayride, play some old-fashioned family games, win prizes, and enjoy the season. For info, you can call 541-247-9203. Oh yeah, now it's time for a bit of weird history with my alter ego, Bushwhacker Bruce. Right! G'day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's Bit of Weird History for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know a president once approved a journey to the center of the earth? It's right out of Jules Verne. It's true. Here's the story. In the 1820s, John Quincy Adams approved an exhibition to the center of the earth. Part of the plan was to meet the race of people living inside the earth and to conduct trade with them. The proposal was made by an army officer named John Cleves Sims, Jr. He had been touring the country and giving lectures about his theory of a hollow earth. He believed the earth was made up of several spheres, and that there were openings at the north and south poles that could be used to get inside the earth and explore its hollow interior. So, he planned to take 100 men to the Arctic and use sleighs pulled by reindeer to travel to the North Pole and enter into the earth. He also believed that there could be a race of people living inside the earth, and part of his plan for the expedition was to establish trade with them. Well, the theory was considered laughable by most people, but when Sims lobbied the government to fund his expedition, John Quincy Adams said yes. However, Adams' term in office ended before the plan was carried out. Once Andrew Jackson became president, he put a stop to the plan right quickly. Adams then took the journey to the center of the House of Representatives. I hope you enjoyed this week's Bitter Weird History with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. Oh yeah, so hey, you know, there you go. I'm sure it was inspired by Jules Byrne's book, that's for sure. Journey to the Center of the Earth. But yeah, there you go. There's people still think that might be happening. Hey, we got Latitude 42. Oh, here we go. One for the ladies. Latitude 42 Bar and Grill is presenting Men Next Door Uncovered. Uh-oh. It's Magic Mike, ladies. <laughs> 10 14 on October 14th, 9 p.m., Latitude 42. Don't miss out on the best girls' night out ever. Check out Latitude 42's website and learn more about the show. There are very limited tickets. The show is two hours long, packed with choreographed costume acts, and interaction with the audience. It is a huge novelty and will sell out, so they suggest you buy your tickets ahead of time. If you have any questions, you can go to their Facebook page and you can send them a message. That's right. A magic mic experience, ladies. That's what it is. <laughs> hey, the Brookings Emblem Club, number 265, has a community fundraiser at the Brookings Elks Lodge going on. This is also on the 14th of October, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Brigades Evan Club is having a community fundraiser for the local charities on October 15th, possibly the 15th, if they still have inventory. The rummage sale will be at the Brickens Elks Lodge. If you would like to donate, you can contact Ruth Bossom at 773-569-8687. And then Brickens Harbor Garden Club is presenting Choosing Native Plants for Your Landscape with guest speaker Darcy Grayhick. 
owner of Stillwater's Native Nursery in Bandon. This will be happening on October 16th, 5 p.m. at the Czech Code Library. This presentation explains how to assess your landscape and choose appropriate species for your garden's own climate. And Friends of Music is presenting Quartetto Latamericano at 7th Day Adventist Church, 102 Park Avenue in Brookings, October 22nd, 3 p.m. Join them for the next performance in the 2022-23 Friends of Music Concert Series. Quartetto Latinoamericano is one of the world's most renowned string quartets and for 40 years the leading proponent of Latin American music for the genre. Founded in Mexico in 1982, the Quartetto has toured extensively throughout Europe, North and South America, Israel, China, Japan, and New Zealand. Admission is just $20 and students 18 and under are always free. Tickets are available for purchase at the door online at Wright's Custom Art and Framing in Brookings or Del Norte Office Supply in Crescent City. For more information, you can email to info at p-p-a-d-e-l-n-o-r-t-e dot o-r-g. Okay. Hey, Manly Arts Center is featuring the works of Elizabeth Roberts. Meet the Marine Debris Artist at Saturday's Art Walk, October 14th from 3 to 6 at the Manly Arts Center. Ten years ago, artist Elizabeth Roberts volunteered for a marine debris cleanup expedition that would forever change her life. While picking up litter in the Gulf of Alaska, she became horrified by how much trash, 80,000 pounds of mostly non-biodegradable toxic plastics, was accumulating on this remote, uninhabited island. She learned from research scientists as she witnessed firsthand how the long-term consequences of our reliance on plastic and the chemicals they are made from was absolutely destroying our marine ecosystem. What started out as an exciting summer adventure developed into a committed crusade to use her skills as an artist to educate people about the devastating impacts of plastic pollution in our aquatic environments. Elizabeth Roberts' show will run for the entire month of October at the Manly Arts Center located at 433 Oak Street in Brookings, Oregon. I wonder if that, I believe that's probably her works when you're heading up to Bandon. On the side, there's that big fish out there. And then in Bandon, there's a couple. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a few when I was going up there. I've seen them. I've seen them out there. And they're huge. But very cool. Taking the garbage and making artwork out of it. And then we got Curry Health Foundation Golf 4 Health Tournament at Salmon Run Golf Course on October 21st. Hello, golfers. Curry Health Foundation is excited to host their third annual Golf 4 Health Tournament at beautiful Salmon Run Golf Course in Brookings on Saturday, October 21st. The proceeds raised by the tournament will help support local nonprofit projects targeting health and wellness needs in Curry County. This year's tournament will include on-course contests with prizes for the winners and a great raffle opportunity to participate in. The entry fee is $100 per player, and the format is Best Ball Scramble. Included in the entry fee is a continental breakfast and a fabulous post-game barbecue provided again this year, courtesy of Larry Weston. So all you golfers out there, pull together a team or sign up as a single player and they'll match you up with others. The registration is at 8 a.m. and the shotgun is at 9 a.m. You can sign up on the internet at www.curryhealthfoundation.com or you can register by phone 408-242-9503. Eleanor Foskett or 541-247-3198, which is office messaging. That's right. So the Golf 4 Health. I love it. Hey, and Meals on Wheels is looking for volunteers. Meals on Wheels are in need of volunteer drivers. They deliver about 75 hot meals daily to seniors that can't get to the Checkco Activity Center for the daily meals served there. They have a harbor route and a Brookings route. This is a perfect opportunity for anyone out there that wants to give back to the community and be a friendly face to deliver a hot meal and a little kindness to our local seniors. Whether you're interested in doing a day, a week, or a month, all volunteers are welcome. Please contact Debbie Lutz, 714-423-9797, and they'll be helping out. Very cool. Hey, and we got game night at the Wismsico Griffin. This is located at 615 Checko Avenue by the Redwood Theater. Tuesdays and Fridays from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, and board games. The Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America is scouting for new troop members. Boys and girls are both invited. They have Troop 32, 
which is the scout troop. And then we have the troop 4032, and that is for the girls. So now we got two scout troops here going on. And if you'd like to go and volunteer, they meet at Scout Hall 7 to 8.30 p.m. Monday night, except on holidays. They want to come meet the troops and learn more about what scouts can help you achieve. So if you're out there and you want to be a scout, or if your grandparents are listening to this, or your parents are listening to this, or somebody's listening to this, and they know a kid that could really dig being in the scouts, well, then you go ahead and get a hold of Troop 32 Scoutmaster Mark Hagelin, 541-661-2749. And for the girls, you go Troop 4032 Scoutmaster Rebecca Wilson, and you can call her at 707-951-3647. Yes, indeedy. And Scout Hall is located at 414th Azalea Park Road in Brookings. Yeah, we need to keep the scouts going around here. Hey, and Brian Scott monthly artist is Brian Childers. Brian Childers creations in wood, exposed tantalizing colors, grain, and surface when finished. Linda Ross, ceramicist and mixed media artist who believes the best art is art that makes you feel something. And Donna Goss, who expresses her talents in creating wood and stone sculptural form, which are both satisfying and complete. There's like three artists of the month going on here. Yeah. So for more information about the galleries, you can visit brianscottgallery.com or call 541-412-8687. The gallery is open Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And hey, folks. You know what? I got to get going. Yeah, I got the Flying Fickle Finger of Fate, and I just saw the time just flew by. So before we go, I want to give a shout out to support local businesses. Remember to always, please, shop local. Well, it's time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I also want to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. And I want to thank you all for tuning into this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, at kciw.org. And while you're there, hey, check out the live streaming as well. Well, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis, and uh, I hope Cat feels better real soon and is back with us next week. But I'm going to sign off, keep it real, and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll see you out there. Bam! I'll live with 32 seconds. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.